you know what time it is hi guys hope you're well i have so much to talk about about whatever is happening in the entertainment industry right now but i'll have to split it into two parts first part is about what i've been watching online and the second part will be more so about the music industry more specifically because i have so much to talk about hmm interesting anyways first thing i'm going to talk about is the fact that i've watched the first season of love is by the uk i've seen the discourse i've seen it all and i've been obsessed with that show. but it made me realize and similarly around the same time there's also there was also a lot of buzz around love island us to be honest i don't really watch those shows i watch ashley marie's and remy's podcast and they talked about the fact that there's so much unseen footage that is unavailable to the public it's very crazy because we only see a small part of everything that's being filmed also being an avid watcher of the real housewives franchise i remember back in the day they would always release an unseen footage episode at the end of the reunion after the reunion and i don't think they do that now but i don't know if it would be like it would become a thing again especially with love is Blind uk and love I think for Love Island US, they have released really some unseen footage and from one on one side it is interesting for the viewer because they get more content and they get to understand more of the dynamics but on the other hand, I think it is very important for production companies to also protect their contestant because they're essentially everyday people and from just overnight they just are treated as celebrities, everyone is like boring them with questions and some people, if, especially if they're disliked, they can be really hated quite quickly and quite harshly. So it is very important to protect these contestants, especially from when there's a lot of talk recently about the parasocial parasocial relationship with super fans and how heavily attached they are to their celebrities. So I, I see a side where there's no need to release the unseen footage. What we see on TV is what we needed to see and that's it but i also wanted to point out specifically about love is blind uk in the sense that jasmine told in an interview that out of the 15 couples there were 11 that made out until the onto the engagement part and yet we only got to see six <laughs> i was like six engagement out of 11. so i'm trying to understand from the production company perspective why they would showcase more six people rather than not all. i think it would be more interesting to see all 11 contestants but then again there might be the project concerns and all that so some people might but then i wouldn't say some people might want to be more so behind the behind the scene but then again when you sign up for that kind of experiment i would think that they also sign up to the fact that they're going to be filmed the the real life change overnight looking at the trip in greece with love is fine there were only six couples and that makes you think that the other couples out of the 11, does that mean that they didn't go to Greece? Or did the project company said, we're going to sl split the group in half? Maybe they filmed the, the other I don't know. That These are really interesting questions. As I was watching the show, and I also realized that when I was watching Owning Manhattan, but I've been more aware of the music that is played in shows and movies. And I think Netflix should just throw a feature where they put the music plays of each episode or of the movie so that if someone is really interested in the music in the background they could just you know like click add to apple music add to spotify account that would be such a game changer so i think that could also be a great way for artists to get a new audience and then speaking of movie i feel like everything's being transitioned it's so funny Pharrell Williams is apparently doing a movie his biopic and then lego universe which is so interesting it's so different compared to the news that we've had saying that there we might have we, that we will be having a shrek 5 incredible 3 there's there might be an, another little and stitch like every movie from my show is being remade the fact that pharaoh is doing a lego movie about his life or his music career is really interesting because when we see other of other celebrities biopics it has to be really serious and very you know like oscar worthy and be a serious project and i think for us doing like yellow guys we're doing legos we're gonna sing we're gonna dance and that makes me think of what other artists can do that type of you know like quirky fun 
biopic like that i'm thinking like what celebrities could do uh their biopic based on like despicable me universe like the, with the minions you know like oh, that, oh my god that would be so fun actually or like within the sims universe which is not a movie but it, it could be cool like a dr seuss <gasps> oh my god imagine dr seuss inspired biopic i will watch that like it has to be the right project Pharaoh Miyama is unexpected, but the fact in my head is the fact that he has been such a big important player in the fashion industry, in the music industry. He could do a bit of everything, so I'm not surprised. Actually, I am surprised he didn't do a biopic with within the Despicable Me universe because he did two really popular songs for Despicable Me. And sir, mm, what? Okay, that's actually quite interesting. But yeah, I actually would see. I don't know, I'm just throwing out ideas. Oh, I don't know actually. I would see Taylor Swift do a biopic like surrounding like a cat universe or I, like Jenna Ortega has been like, I want to say Tim Burton's muse in some ways. So she could do something <gasps> like a Caroline inspired biopic. With, but then again, the, the thing with biopics is that you have to live, you have to have lived a, quite a, life, a certain life. You can't just do a biopic when you're like 15. Unless you have gone through immense stuff or it's surrounded by a big event that has shaped someone's character then i would understand but if you're like i don't see myself do it by a when i'm only 22 like there's no point in doing that but i would be interested to see in the upcoming years if there's what there are other actors or other singers doing stuff like that i could actually see Ariana grande do a biopic but on broadway yeah or um I forgot her name, but the woman who plays like the mean woman in Ugly Betty, or um, or she was also playing in Desperate Housewives, that she could literally do a biopic on Broadway, and I think could do really, 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 really well. Hey guys, this is the next day, and I forgot to talk about one last topic that I really wanted to discuss a bit further. And as I'm filming this, the Paralympic Games are due to end later this week. I don't understand why. Paralympic Games are always after the original Olympic Games because first of all for some reason I think these Olympic Games felt really really long and that also may probably do that there are a lot of more events a lot of new sports int being introduced new more athletes participating at the Olympic Games and that is also interesting because as someone who watches tennis avidly like I grew up watching tennis there is this new sentiment that there has been a lot more tennis players participating at competitions to the point that some championships overlap each other and a lot of athletes have said that they have to be more strategic because about which events they participate in because they essentially don't have any time off because of that also there has been a lot more injuries in tennis i cannot talk about sport uh, about other sports but in tennis specifically especially like for men there's always someone who's injured who can go to a major event a big championship which is very sad well it's not like it's very confusing because there's so many new talents that are really developing their game what i'm trying to say is just that there is a new wave of new tennis player coming in emerging talent but with everyone that seems to be, i'm not saying everyone but there are a lot of established tennis players getting injured and they have to miss out on major events major tournaments or even have to sit a whole year out and i don't even want to talk about the doping cases and i actually did a whole my one of my essays for uni was unintentional doping so i can do a, a whole video about that um once I get my grades back but the appeal in tennis is when you have a new emerging talent and they seem to really challenge the established tennis players for example Kyrgios although his um, very outgoing attitude he a lot of apples were on him because he was able to defeat Djokovic Nadal Federer and he was relatively new-ish to the to the scene at the time he did it so that was really interesting and there there are so many like shelton the american player he a lot of eyes are on him because he's just new well i don't say new but um he's new to the scene and everyone's talking about him everyone's interested in in his 
trajectory. There's just so many new talents and same thing for women's tennis. So, but because you hear, for example, Alcaraz being injured or Djokovic being injured or Nadal being injured. And also new talents can also be injured, but we don't necessarily talk or hear about them that much. Maybe it will give the opportunity for, for example, the tennis organization to work on the schedule and make sure that, that tennis players have the time to rest so that they can start their the tour really well throughout like throughout the entire year but just to go back to the olympic games to me it felt like really really long but yet and yet there has been a lot of media surrounding the olympic games as always you know it's like every it's happening every four years you know the brands really want to push the talent from each country what was what i was going on with this was the fact that i don't understand why to have this big event and essentially this year there has been a lot of athletes you know being active on social media and all that stuff which is great it also brings awareness and like um keeps the younger audience engaged in those events major events but with ha that happening and then there's a two week break and then we have the paralympic games essentially people don't really seem to talk about it for for example these olympic games at the beginning of august i didn't need to search for anything i was always being fed the content which wherever i was like something online and i was being fed oh well this team won this or like there was a lot of drama happening at the olympic games but with the paralympics i have to search for that information to see what is happening right now for example in canada the like the cbc news they always have a big banner at the front explaining everything that is happening at the olympic and paralympic games so it's already easy and they might do sometimes for some french news outlet but in the english newspapers which is or like the news websites i have to scroll a bit and then it says oh sports I don't know this athlete won the Paralympic medal or this and the it's really weird because I'm pretty sure that the as I'm filming right now the UK is well not the UK the Great Great Britain is number two which I would think they would like promote it everywhere and all that stuff no but also the Paralympic Games happen after the Olympic Games it's a bit weird it, it kind of feels like it's like an afterthought you know you have two weeks to, to establish everything and what I find really infuriating is that they have two weeks paris has two weeks to make sure that everything is in place for the paralympic games and tell me why i see a video of i think it was a paralympic um athlete trying to use the metro and at that station there was no elevators uh, for people who need it and the person had to essentially go backwards using their wheelchair to go down the stairs and there was no stuff in place i like living in london they really make sure that they let people know which stations have access for people in wheelchairs or other disabilities and they really make sure that if you need any help there's always someone ready to help you there's always an agent at the station ready to help you and i believe there was none of that in paris and you know that the olympic games are in your city and there has been no no established like nothing put in place for that so i was really really shocked actually i'm not that shocked but i was really really mad to see that video and yet they had two weeks apparently two weeks after the olympic games to figure it all out in my head it would make more sense if either they put some events some like paralympic and olympic events at the same time so you would have instead of doing olympics then a break and then the paralympics you would just do one big month of olympic and paralympic games like once i don't know once the swimming events are are done you would do the same but for paralympic athletes or like you just alternate between events i think that would keep that that could just create more incentive and also like i think if you and i think also if for example paris were or i mean next the next event is going to be in la but la could say okay well you get the ticket for like the next two events which is both the olympics and the paralympics events people are more likely to stay because they they want to make their money worth you know so that could be a good thing or if it's really important to keep the keep it separate i would say make the paralympics beforehand before the olympic games because it could create more it could give more excitement into you know like preparing for the olympic games because that's where all like all the major sponsors and like everyone's like p pushing the you know, live streaming or yeah of the event but also 
if the Paralympics were to happen before, I would also say, I would also think from a perspective of les aménagements, like the establishment, if you already have the accessible providing like lifts or making sure that the sideways have a little thing for the people disabled or having anything in braille or all of that stuff already in place that could also give it that would also give an incentive to the spectator like any disabled spectators to actually go to the paralympics and olympic games because two weeks and a lot of can happen in two weeks a lot of people can just forget about things within two weeks you know how quickly people just like forget about something or lose interest in something within two weeks so i would just say do the paralympics and then right after once you right when you're done you don't even need to reinstall anything you can just keep all the infrastructures in place that was more accessible for disabled people and then just make it continue for other people like you know it it makes more sense yeah i don't know i i don't really see anything happening I have to search for the thing. I have to search for the information. And even when I go through pubs and all that stuff, there's nothing happen. There's no live streaming of the events for Paralympics. So I don't even know how people are. I think are people just waiting for the news to report on the stuff or? But I mean that just sucks. It's just a missed opportunity. And of course you could say, well, the sponsorship. I see it more as a an investment. You know, making sure that people are when if you give more access to people to watch the the games i think it could incite some kids to say you know what i want i don't I, I want to go into fencing or i want to go into swimming or even like even for paralympic kids even for disabled kids because if you want this person is doing really well I, I want to pursue that as well so not everything has to be like profitable for you you know if it serves a better good like if it serves a better purpose i i don't see anything wrong with you know losing a bit of money to help a, to help more people but you know what those companies don't want that they want to make money 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 and that's it. anyways i don't know i'm just rambling but yes uh that's all i wanted to say for now okay bye